Can I ask you about batteries for a second? Uh, yeah, sure. So you're building this Giga factory, right? You've, it's built. It's, well, it's not completely built. But okay, but it, part but of it's up and a running. A big chunk of it's built, yeah. Part of it's, it's up and running. It's a really gigantic thing. It's, like when the Giga factory is done, it'll be the largest footprint building of any kind in the world, of any kind, not just factories. It literally of any. What is kind. this? The largest rocket, the largest building. I mean. Every, well, I mean, I think this, it's not scale for scale's sake. It's just like if you say, well, we want to accomplish these goals, then, um, then you kind of have to be, make a big thing. So, okay. Um, You've got this big thing. It's this big, giant building. Right. Yeah. It's going to make batteries. The batteries it's going to make are lithium. Yeah, we're going to have an opening. Well, it's not technically an opening party since it's been operating for a little while, but we're going to have a party soon. You guys maybe want to come. Okay. We can come? We'll come. All right. Yeah, good. Sure. We'll come to the can battery they, party. It's pretty, but they can't I, I come. It's worth seeing. This they is can't like, come, right? Just this this yeah. is crazy. No. <laughs> This is like an alien dreadnought. It's really okay. nutty. Because I love a battery party, but yeah. Um, <laughs> right, right, but but but, but talk but about where it's going. Are these lithium-ion batteries? Yeah, yeah, sure. So they're the same batteries that's in no. our phone. No. no. <laughs> explain, please explain. Yeah. So, so lithium-ion. Have you made a, a battery breakthrough? Is something I'm interested in. Um, yeah, I mean, generally, the I mean, there's there's so much nonsense out there about batteries. Like, about, you can believe about one percent of what you read. Um, on a, you know, maybe. Um, uh, lithium ion covers a very broad range of technologies. Um, and you can have an enormous difference in the power density and the energy density and the cycle life um, between one chemistry and another. They can be really enormously different. Um, so uh, what you really actually want to ask is what is the cathode and what is the anode? Right. Um, so in our case, that's right. Okay. <laughs> um, I well, just put it in the. The, the lithium is actually two percent of the cell mass. Mm -hmm. So, so it's like the salt in the salad. It's it's a very small um, amount of the cell mass and a fairly small amount of the cost. Um, but it sounds like it's big because it's called lithium ion. But it it, it really like our battery should be called nickel graphite because uh, it's mostly nickel and graphite. Okay, and, and um, it's nickel, cobalt, aluminum. But battery other little things in graphite with a silicon oxide layer. Battery like efficiency or power that you know the power that you can store in a certain uh, mass seems to be move very slowly at least compared to you know we're used to Moore's law pushing uh, integrated circuits faster. Batteries kind of are always in our consumer devices always lagging behind. In your, you've built this giant thing, the biggest building in the world has ever seen. It's not, it's not fully built, but yes, it's you're building a pretty the big chunk building is built, the world so has yeah, ever yeah, seen. Yeah. Uh, to make batteries, your whole business depends on batteries in these cars. Have you figured out a way to do some significant uh, increase in the yield of energy from a given amount of of space in the battery? Well, uh, yeah, I mean the the. The energy density is increasing sort of maybe on the order of like five-ish percent per year. Um, and it doesn't sound like much, but you add that up over a number of years with compound interest, it ends up being quite, quite a significant number. Um, and a lot of people sort of think that, oh, well, we just sort of cobbled together some um, laptop batteries and somehow made a great car. But if it was that easy, then I think we would have quite a few competitors who did the same thing. But, it, but it's, it's, it's really quite quite a lot harder than that. Um, the, it, it's a cylindrical form, form factor, but the internals of the battery are quite different from what you would find in, uh, in a laptop. Um, and, uh, and, and, and will be increasingly different with the, what's built at the Gigafactory, which is highly optimized for automotive um, and, um, and with, has improved energy density. But, but mostly, it's not the energy density that's the issue, because you, know, you can buy, if you buy a Model S today, um, the range is um, around 300 miles, um, and, and that, yeah, that's quite a lot. Um, so it's pretty rare that people really need to go more than 300 miles at without a time stopping. without stopping. Right. You know, um, so I don't think we really have a range issue. And we could make a 400-mile range car today. Like, that wouldn't be too big of a deal. Um, the, the, so what, what really matters is decreasing the cost uh, per unit of energy of the battery packs, that, okay. so you can make the car affordable. That's actually the, the, the important thing. Um, so there's, 
and, and there's really two main, main dimensions along which uh, cost optimization and making something available to the national market can be achieved. One is design iteration, going through multiple versions of something, and then the other is economies of scale. Um, and you kind of need both of those, those things in order to make a compelling mass market uh, product. And you look at like cell phones and how many design iterations have we gone through with cell phones, um, and, and then and, 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 what, and look at the scale at which they're, they're made, which is enormous. Uh, and that's what enables everyone to have a supercomputer in their pocket.